I mean, are the point totals telling the story right now? It's so back up 140 point game with 147 point of game. We're pretty seeing clicking on the offense right now for these totals. Uh, well, the, the best thing we're doing is not turning it over. You know, we only had 10 turnovers tonight. I think eight of them were in the first half. So two turnovers the entire second half. So we're getting plenty of shots up, 49 threes. Uh, you know, it's uh, kind of a pickup game out there. You know, it really is. I'm, I'm more like the director at the YMCA than I'm a coach. I'm just like, you guys are shirts and you guys are skins. And, uh, go play. But that's, that's you know, that's kind of a game these days. So you, know, you try to get them, get them organized. Uh, but... Um, you know, our guys, uh, our, all our focus is is just playing together, playing hard, and uh, coming off a trip to Denver um, and a big win last night, a late return and time change, altitude, all that. You could see the effects. It took us uh, a lot of effort to win that game, and um, it took every every ounce of it to, to get over the hump. Steve, you might have just answered this, but given – in fact, you guys weren't shooting as many threes as perhaps the rest of the teams in the NBA, and now you guys over the last 10 or so games are leading the NBA in that number. Was there a conscious effort to get more threes up over this stretch? No. Uh, Steph got healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Simple enough. Were you disappointed with the defense uh, there for a while, getting down 17, or do you think you guys were there and they were just making the job? Our, our defense was poor, uh, but we were also playing against a team that puts a, uh, a lot of pressure on you. Uh, you know, Meritich had it going in the first half. When he's shooting the ball for them, they got the whole floor space, and you got to deal with Davis. Uh, they're a handful. And um, I think, uh, as I said, the, the, the back-to-back was apparent to me, to all of us. Uh, as a staff, I just, uh, you know, to, to play defense these days takes so much effort. You have so much uh, court to cover. You're in transition almost every play. Uh, it, it's, I don't think it's ever been more difficult to guard in the NBA than it is right now. All the rules are geared towards the offensive guy. So it takes uh, focus and, and supreme effort, and I didn't think we got that for the most part uh, for the first you know, two and a half quarters. And uh, felt like our guys finally uh, summoned the energy. Uh, you know, it, it, it happened in concert with, with Steph going, crazy from three, but um, we started making some stops at the same time, and that turned the game. Coach, you did mention after the Detroit game that you weren't getting up at enough threes. That, um, so has it really just been Steph getting back? I know that was his first game back, but there hasn't been any more of an emphasis there to do anything differently strategically to make that happen? No. Um, you know, we, uh, we actually talked about it as a team maybe a month ago. Um, we, we talked about the fact that everybody's going three-point crazy around the league. And uh, our focus is always get a great shot, um, whatever that shot is. You know, for us, a lot of those mid-range shots we take are really good shots because we got Steph, Clay, KD, all, all those guys are fantastic, you know, stepping in, taking a 15-footer off the dribble. So we just want good shots, and uh, we talked about that a month ago. I, I told them, don't worry about how many threes you, you're taking. You know, everybody's going to ask you about it, but take good shots. Honestly, Steph just changes the whole equation, and it, it really does come down to Steph being back um, because the tempo uh, goes back up, and he, I mean, he shot 17 of them tonight. So, I mean, that's the difference. Um, he's... He's going to get he's going to get a ton of them up, and that, that just drives the team total up, obviously. Steve, given Andre's age, what does he do with his routine uh, that enables him to be able to attack the basket? So. Uh, Andre just is a professional. I mean, he takes unbelievable care of himself uh, with his diet, his exercise, his treatment, um, and I think one of the uh, probably untold stories this year. Here I am telling the media what they should write about. Andre's having a hell of a year. He's having a phenomenal year. And uh, it doesn't always show up in the box score with Andre because he's not a big scorer. Uh, but night after night, he is making a dramatic impact. Uh, and I wouldn't have said that a year ago. You know, I thought last year he had a, a slow regular season. We knew he was sort of saving it for the playoffs. And, and he was great in the playoffs. But I think he has been awesome the entire uh, first half of the season.
great line, 51 assists and six turnovers yeah. in the last five games. You mentioned you, know, you guys were limited turnovers. How much of that is just you know, waiting for you? Um, I think Draymond is uh, is feeling about as good as he's felt all year uh, physically. Um, you know, obviously he started out the year with the injury, uh, but over the last couple of weeks, um, you can see he feels confident with his conditioning, his strength, uh, and he's just doing a tremendous job pushing the ball in transition and then making a simple play. You know, I, I haven't seen some of the, you know, the the, the no look hook passes or throw aheads that, you know, go out of bounds. He's just making sure of each pass. And that's that's the biggest thing. I've said it for years. If we can, you know, stay even on the possession game with our opponents, we're usually going to win because we have that much talent. Steve, you, you mentioned Steph's nine threes. Uh, gives him eight or more threes in three consecutive games on first player in, in NBA history. Are, are you surprised? James Harden didn't do that? <laughs> nope, guess not. He did everything else this week. <laughs> does anything that Steph does on the court surprise you anymore? And what does that like to, from the coaching perspective to see a player get white hot like that? Obviously, we did in the third quarter tonight. Yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I can't say that you know, nothing he does surprises me anymore because tonight that, that might have been um, the most unbelievable stretch in terms of the, the difficulty of the shots. I've seen him get hot, obviously, a million times. Uh, I'm looking forward to watching the tape because it seemed like, uh, I don't know, how many did he make in a row? You guys keep track of all this stuff. Anybody know in the seven third quarter? Seven. seven or eight? Set up the seven, 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 seven in the third. It looked to me like they were all about six, eight feet beyond the three point line with a guy, you know, hand in his face. It's just, uh, it's insane what, what he does. And, um, uh, I mean, we're seeing it around the league, guys stretching out shooting range to um, areas on the court where, you know, you didn't really see shots come from. Uh, you know, I'm watching the tape last night coming home from Denver, and, um, you know, Kevin came down in transition and pulled up, and one foot was on the E, and the other foot was on the P, on the Pepsi logo, <laughs> Pepsi Center, like, like it was nothing. And... Uh, that's like a 32 footer or something, just easy. And uh, it's crazy because this uh, only guy I could think of, you know, back 20 years ago was Reggie Miller. Sometimes would, would step out just to show off a little bit and, and shoot one of those, but nobody really you know, shot those routinely. And now you got guys all over the league who are doing it. Steve, I, I can't believe that after you guys won such an impressive game last night, you come back 24 hours later and play this way. I, I, Maybe you guys have done this before. I can't remember off the top of my head, but how does a team do that? You know, we wouldn't have won this game uh, a month ago. You know, I think um, we're in a different place now. I can feel it as a coach. Uh, we're, we're more connected now, and uh, tonight was one of those games you, you kind of knew. You know, we we talked about it as a staff beforehand. Kind of knew you're going to have to gut this one out. You know, they're playing well. They just beat the Clippers. You know, they uh, in L.A. They had a night off. Uh, they play fast, uh, downhill, all that. So um, I don't think we would have won this game a few weeks ago, but we're, we're really connected, and uh, our guys are, are competing well together, and it's been really fun to watch. Coach, this was the second consecutive night when Alfonso McKinney had a larger role on the bench than a lot of his compatriots. What – what inspires that kind of confidence in him, and what are you seeing from him? Uh, the game was really fast tonight, and um, so we went with him uh, because of his size and uh, and speed uh, athletically, and um, he, he was a good matchup uh, for what they were throwing at us. So I thought he did a great job.